we've seen some amazing finishes in the Tartar Steel tournament and this game that we're about to see is also amazing or, or maybe I should say extraordinary and bizarre. Honestly I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this in an elite tournament. So this is the game between Anish Giri playing with White against Sam Shankland. So Sam is doing you know, pretty well so far in the tournament. It's the first time he's played in the top tournament in, in um, Vicante. Uh, Anish Giri, of course, fighting for first place. And it was a fairly balanced game with, well, Giri was, was pushing for, for most of the game. He had White. Um, but by the time they reached the time control here, it's um, black to play, move 41. Things have settled and all the pawns are getting liquidated on the king side. Now the only problem is that that knight is now trapped at the side of the board. And it was around about this moment that Shankland started shaking his head and swearing under his breath and... Funny thing is, Geary realised that the position was still a draw. Let's take a look and see what happened. And here, in this position, it's still a draw. And Geary was thinking, OK, how can I try and convince him that he's lost? So he played pawn to b6 with a poker face. The pawn can be forced there, by the way. And Shankland held out his hand and resigned. And, well, Geary tells the story that basically he shook his hand and then basically made sure, asked him, are you resigning? Um, just to be absolutely sure. I tell you what, if I was Shankland, I'd, <laughs> I'd say thanks for the draw. Um, but no, Sam thought he was lost here and simply resigned the position. In fact, it's still drawn. And Sam just must have had a brainstorm because it's a pretty well-known theoretical uh, drawing position. So let's take a look. Basically, the king just heads back here. So white's king takes the knight. King heads here. And the king parks itself on c8. Now, if it runs into the corner, then it's just stalemate. Um, but even with the king here uh, on c8 and d8 this is still a draw so for example bishop comes to f4 so that stops the king going into the corner which is one kind of drawing position um, but the king is still absolutely fine but this is where shankton thought he was lost but in fact if the white king approaches it's just stalemate so here for example and when the king gets too close that is stalemate even if, um, yeah, let me show you another drawing position, which is if the king goes into the corner as well. I mean, it makes no difference. Black can still come back to, to d8 here. But if the king goes in the corner, this is also a draw. When the white king approaches, it's just stalemate. And the funny thing is that it makes absolutely no difference in this position that... Um, White has a pawn, an extra pawn on b4. This this pawn is completely irrelevant on b4. The point is, with the pawn on b6, that makes it a drawn position. Quite incredible, of course. Uh, I feel very sorry for Sam, who, well, he must know that it's a theoretical draw already, but um, in the heat of the moment, he just got confused, completely confused. I did a little bit of research uh, on this endgame position and in fact I found quite a few examples where players have messed up and allowed this drawing position. Have a look at this with you know pretty decent players. So this was from the European Team Championship in the match between Scotland and Wales. Alan Tate playing for Scotland, Richard Diney playing for Wales. Now, Alan Tate playing with White has played a good game and he's about to win here. 
by pushing the pawn and black has to give up the bishop so white has an extra bishop watch out for that pawn here only thing that black can possibly do is bring the king round to attack the e-pawn and here Tate plays the king back to c5 if he just plays bishop d5 this is winning let's just see let's keep going for a little bit attacks the e-pawn king defends the e-pawn now let's just bring the bishop round to g4 i mean black doesn't have to push the g-pawn but well it's going to be took tongue and well black has to move away and then then king take king takes pawn let's just see that there we go and white wins but instead of protecting the e-pawn tate played king c5 now watch what happens king goes to d6 it even looks like this king is going to sprint towards the g-pawn but no black has enough counterplay with the e-pawn if the king goes to e7 well white can even lose this position if he's not careful this would actually be losing and then the king makes way for the g-pawn but okay this is still a draw of course instead of king e7 king d5 this was the game continuation and that allows black's king back into the drawing position you can see it's exactly the same position but just mirrored down the center of the board and after a few moves white gave up and they agreed a draw uh, this next one let me just show you one more this is very interesting so this is played in the German Bundesliga in 2012 in the match between Kartenberg and Wattenscheid um, Sarah Holt, Sarah Holt <laughs> sorry, son, against uh, uh, Tobias Hirneiser uh, who is uh, a German international master and here uh, Zara played King c3 now that is a very sneaky move a very very sneaky trap and here Hionizer plays b4 check and that is a draw we'll see why in a second uh, this is actually a pretty simple win if uh, sorry instead of b4 if we play instead let's just we'll wait for the time being okay let's suppose white weights okay now we're going to put the bishop on c4 so this either forces the king back or tempts white into making a pawn move if the pawn comes up to b3 that's okay we'll bring the bishop back and we'll wait now if the king goes back to c3 then we can give a check and the king comes in and that's well the king is forced back and that's a very easy win or if we come to this position um, if king here king comes in c3 and this is completely winning just force the king back and so on of course if the pawn comes to c4 we can always just play b4 and the bishop takes care of the uh, c pawn so let's come back to this position so instead of b3 let's go back with the king so black's king inevitably comes forward so the technique is just to drive white's king backwards and well pawn moves are simply losing in this position so let's let's try and move the king and well now now the king moves are running out because king a1 and king takes pawn is an easy win so let's let's move a pawn and now well again actually the pawn moves are running out as well 
and here it's Zugzwang. The white king has no move, so white just has to give up the pawns, and that's an easy win. So that's how to do it. You basically make waiting moves and force the king back, making sure that you, you keep your pawn. But in the game, Hionizer played b4 check. Mistake. Now, not king b3. That would lose very smartly to that move. Bishop d1, that's annoying. But we'll just put the king back. And the king is going back to c1. So you'll recognize the position. And now c3, and this achieves our drawing position because obviously black can't exchange off the last pawn but plays instead you have to keep the pawn and the c pawn of course is completely irrelevant basically we have the position that we saw we've already seen in both the games so far in in geary shankland with these pawns here that's the crucial thing that this pawn has come all the way here and that means that White can set up these stalemating positions. And well, in this case, Holt uh, puts the king in the corner. Um, and yeah, here it makes absolutely no odds. Basically, you're just going to give up the c pawn. And well, the players messed around for a few moves, but basically, there's nothing doing. King, king could still come to c1, by the way. Um, but Playing into the corner is absolutely fine too. And after a bit, let's just see the end. Well, it's still our drawn position. The king can either go to a1 or c1. <coughs> it really doesn't matter in this position. So there we go. Um, strange things happen at the end of a game when you've been playing for a few hours and suddenly Everything you know just disappears from your mind. And yeah, poor Sam Shankland, he'll be kicking himself. But, well, well played by Anish Giri using his poker face <laughs> uh, to win this game. <clears throat> um, that means he now joins Magnus Carlsen in the lead. They both have 7.5 out of 11. And just behind them is uh, Jan Nipomnishi, who has seven. So realistically, it's going to be one of those three players that will win the tournament. Uh, in the next round, Carlsen plays Duda and Giri plays Rodjabov. Um, and then in the last round, Carlsen and Giri will actually play against each other. So... Obviously, those are the two favourites, but Nepo still has an outside chance as well. So things are coming to a grand climax once again in the Tata Steel Tournament. Thanks for watching. Remember, uh, do like, comment, share and subscribe. Subscribe button's down there somewhere, or yeah, probably down there. And if you want to support us, don't forget you can support us on PayPal um, and you can make monthly contributions there. And you can also support us on patreon.com and check out the rewards there. Thanks for watching.